In April 1947, the guards of a maximum security prison in Japan checked the cell of their most notorious prisoner, who the government had ordered to be guarded 24 hours a day, with his hands and feet bound because he had escaped not just once but three times from Japan's tightest prison, said to be impossible to escape from. The guards saw the prisoner sleeping soundly in his cell, seemingly confident that it would be just another ordinary night. So, he returned to the guard room to rest. But when he peeked into the cell again the next morning, he was shocked to find that the prisoner was gone for the fourth time, having escaped again using only soup and a bowl as his tools. How did he do it? This is his true story. Yoshi Shiratori was born in Aomori Prefecture, in a mountainous province of Japan, on July 31, 1907, amidst three siblings. His father died when he was young, and later on, his mother also left them, leaving Yoshi and his two sisters to live with their uncle, their mother's brother, a farmer in Akita Prefecture, 190 kilometers away from Aomori. As they grew up, Shiratori and his siblings assisted their uncle's wife in her tofu shop. Determined to improve their lives, Shiratori sought employment on a Russian ship catching crabs when he was 18 years old. After a few years, he married and had a child, but financial troubles arose due to his gambling habits. To remedy this, he turned to theft to gather funds. On April 3, 1933, he became involved in a group of burglars who raided a warehouse belonging to a merchant in the town of Higashitsuguru. Unfortunately, during their escape, his two accomplices stabbed the merchant's son, who attempted to pursue them, resulting in his death. Rather than hiding and evading the crime, Shiratori surrendered to the police. Two years later, one of his accomplices was arrested, and despite Shiratori's denial of involvement in the murder, he was beaten and tortured by the police until he confessed. Following his trial, he was found guilty and promptly sent to the notorious Almori prison. While incarcerated, Shiratori frequently complained about the deplorable conditions and inhumane treatment by the guards. In response, they intensified his punishment, aggravating the situation. Many prisoners attempted to escape, but they were all caught and subjected to longer sentences and harsher penalties upon their return. However, unbeknownst to the guards, there was one more prisoner who would shatter their reputation as an escape-proof prison. As the abuses continued, Shiratori studied their movements and noticed that there was always a 15-minute gap in the guard patrols every morning. This small window of opportunity presented itself through his tiny window, and in June 1936, he executed his long-planned escape from Aomori Prison using a metal wire from a bucket handle that he had smuggled from the bathroom. He picked the lock of his cell until it opened and escaped through a broken window. Before leaving, he made sure to lock the cell door again to give the impression that he was sleeping. Little did the guards know that it was only tiles from the floor that he had collected and arranged to look like a sleeping figure on the bed. Despite Shiratori's skill in escaping, he was not adept at evading capture for long. For three days, he barely hid in the mountains, surviving on fruits and drinking from streams. However, only three days after his eruption, he descended from the mountain, and here he was caught stealing supplies from a hospital, so he was arrested again. He explained to the court that he only escaped because of the cruelty he experienced inside the prison, but the judge did not listen to him this time. He was given a life sentence and transferred to Miyagi Prison, where Shiratori stayed for three years before being transferred to Kosuch Prison in Tokyo. Here, he became close to the head guard of the prison, Ryomiya Kobayashi, who was kind to him. So, he didn't think about escaping anymore. However, in 1941 when Japan entered the war, all prisoners were transferred from Tokyo to remote areas. He was placed in a maximum security prison in Akita. Aomori Prison, known for its harsh treatment, was even worse than this prison because besides forced labor, it lacked food and water, and all prisoners slept on cold cement floors. So, without wasting any time, Shiratori began to plan his second escape. However, it wouldn't be easy because he was placed alone in a cell specially designed for escape artists like him. The walls were high with a metal skylight, and only smooth, thick walls surrounded him, seemingly without a way for an escape artist like him to climb and escape. 
Facing the challenge, Shiratori found a way to climb the smooth prison walls to the skylight every night, slowly loosening the rusty screws of the metal frame. Due to Shiratori's height compared to the average Japanese, he noticed that he could climb up to the skylight by positioning his feet on one side of the wall while his hands were braced on the other side. Slowly, after a week, he was ready to escape from Shiratori on a rainy night. He successfully opened the skylight of his cell and crawled onto the roof. He deliberately did this because the loud noises of thunder and rain would help mask the sound of him opening the skylight and his footsteps on the prison roof. After only three months in Akita prison, Shiratori was free again. The guards immediately contacted the police to search for the escaped prisoner. They diligently guarded nearby communities for several days, thinking that Shiratori would come out of hiding to get supplies from surrounding establishments. His time, Shiratori managed to evade the police for several months. But with a sudden change of wind, it seemed that his freedom was once again in danger. With the hope of being helped by a friend, Shiratori traveled over 500 kilometers and went to the house of his friend, prison guard Ryomiya Kobayashi, at Kusoj Prison in Tokyo. Ryomiya was surprised when he opened the door of his house and saw Shiratori. He pleaded with the prison official to change the corrupt prison system to end the suffering of the prisoners, especially since he had many friends still trapped inside. The two agreed that Ryomiya would turn him over to the Kosuch police station, where he would testify about all the cruelty he experienced in Akita prison that led him to escape. However, their plan did not work, and the judge did not listen to his explanation. Instead, his sentence was increased, and he was sent to the more significant, heavily guarded, and more difficult to escape Abashiri prison. This prison was isolated and located in the northernmost part of Japan. On one side, there was a large and cold river impossible to swim across, and on the other side were high mountains often covered in ice. If anyone attempted to escape here, it would take months before they could see civilization. The most notorious criminals of Japan, such as former samurai who rebelled against the Japanese government, were imprisoned here. Due to the newspapers reporting his story, Yoshi Shiratori became even more infamous, and the Japanese authorities wanted to ensure that Shiratori would never escape again, so they sent him to Abashiri Prison, where it would be much harder to escape. All the prisoners here are forcibly made to work on farming and building roads and dams for the water they will use inside the prison. A large percentage of the prisoners die from these activities, but the government seems indifferent to their fate. The cruelty he experienced at Akita Prison pales in comparison to Abashiri Prison, where there is no air vent or 15-minute break in guard rotations due to his reputation as an escape artist. Shiratori was imprisoned with heavy iron on his hands and feet, and unlike other prisoners, he was prohibited from working outside. Despite wearing only a thin prison uniform, his daily food was just a bowl of miso soup. Yet Shiratori's cunning escape artist skills emerged again. Every day, Shiratori would drip miso soup onto the rusty chain binding his hands and feet, as well as into the small crevice in his cell door where guards delivered food. Over months, the rust weakened the iron on his hands and feet, and even the lock on the feeding hatch eventually gave in. He ensured there were no guards outside before attempting escape. When he opened the feeding hatch, he discovered it was too small for anything but a head to fit through. Shiratori then utilized his hidden talent of dislocating his own shoulder and slid out through the hatch. He climbed onto the roof through a skylight made of thick metal in the hallway, and using his dislocation skill, he squeezed through a tight hole toward freedom. Yoshi Shiratori became the first and only prisoner to escape from Abashiri Prison. After his third escape, he hid for over a year in an abandoned mine, surviving on wild berries and hunting rabbits. However, one day while foraging, he stumbled upon a farm and was attacked by the owner, who mistook him for a thief. In their struggle, Shiratori accidentally killed the farmer. This commotion alerted the farmer's companions, who promptly called the police, leading to Shiratori's recapture. Despite claiming self-defense, the court didn't believe him, and this time, Shiratori received a death sentence. He was transferred to Sapporo Prison, where he was closely monitored. The authorities erased all records of his previous escapes to prevent any future attempts. Shiratori was chained inside a cell, 
guarded by six officers around the clock. The only opening was a tiny food slot, even smaller than his head. They checked his cell daily for any signs of another escape plan, but found none except for his habit of looking upwards, which they dismissed. After weeks of checks, the guards grew complacent, removing his chains and relaxing their vigilance. But on April 1st, 1947, during morning roll call, Shiratori didn't respond. When they opened his cell, they were astonished to find no trace of him inside. How did he manage to escape for the fourth time? Shiratori had removed a section of tiles under his bed, digging a tunnel using a bowl from his miso soup rations. He dug at night, timing his efforts between guard patrols. His habit of looking upwards served as a diversion from his true activity. For a year outside prison, Shiratori had hidden and eluded authorities until one day, a police officer sat next to him on a bench. Unrecognized, Shiratori confessed, leading to his return to prison. Fortunately, reforms in Japan's prison system favored Shiratori. He explained to the court that his escapes were due to abusive conditions and the killing was self-defense. The court listened this time, commuting his death sentence to 20 years in Sapporo Prison, then transferring him to the more humane Fuchu Prison in Tokyo. There, he didn't attempt escape again, and in 1961, he was released on parole due to his good behavior. Shiratori lived quietly as a free citizen until his death in 1979. His story became a legend in Japan, inspiring comics, documentaries, and various YouTube videos showcasing his daring escapes from the harshest prisons. If you enjoyed watching this video, please don't hesitate to hit like, share, and subscribe.